Hey guys, Christian Madame Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 from the Jan 2018 POE Paper 2. If you want to see the other solutions for this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. Now, before we get into the solution, I just want to let you know something very quickly. The topic for this question is non-profit organizations. Now, from the 2019 exam year come forward, the majority of this topic, with the exception of the receipts and payments account, was removed from the CSEC syllabus, right? I do believe statements of affairs are still on the CSEC syllabus, and I decided to include this entire question, which includes a subscription account, for two reasons. One, in case there are any other people who are watching this particular video or my videos who are doing different syllabuses and will still need some guidance in the subscriptions account um, topic. And two, in case CSEC decides to revamp the syllabus and put this topic back on the syllabus itself. So for those reasons, I'm doing this entire question and not just doing the piece relevant to the current CSEC syllabus. And with that being said, let's get into the question. Okay, so we are seeing here, let's take a read as we always do, right? So it says, the Rose Hall Golf Club has been in existence for several years. Members pay an annual subscription, which entitles them to use the facility for the year. The following is the receipt and payment account, or receipts and payments account, right? For the year ended 31st December 2017. All right, so I guess someone didn't like to put receipts and payments. Well, okay. So basically, your, your receipts and payments account is your cash book with just the bank column. Uh, it's an asset. So on the on the debit side, you have your balance brought down. It can have an overdraft, all right, which would result in a credit balance at start. And you have on the debit side your receipts, money coming in, donations, members, subscriptions. So subscriptions are like membership fees, all right. Um, sales of competition tickets, visitors fees. So you have that's the money coming in, the receipts, and on the credit side here, you are seeing payments. So rent and rates, extension to clubhouse, secretarial expenses, suppliers for competition prizes, stationary equipment purchase, refreshments for competition and repairs. Right? Um, then we have the following information is also available. So we have at the start and at the end of 2017. So we have subscriptions in advance. So we know subscriptions is a revenue. Revenue paid in advance, prepaid revenue is a current liability. All right, subscriptions in arrears. So arrears means owing. Subscriptions is revenue. So if you have revenue owing to you, that's a current asset. Uh, equipment, <laughs> let's, try to, let's try it again. Equipment, right? So there's an increase in equipment. So we bought more equipment, which we, we saw up here, right? 6,000, okay. Um, inventory of competition prizes. So that might come into play later. And amount owing to suppliers of competition prizes. So there's, a, there's an aspect on this question that requires us to work out the, comp the profit made on the competition activities. And it's a little involved. It's actually the, the, the part of the question with the most number of marks. I think it's nine marks. And we will get it and I'll guide you through it. So don't worry about it. All right. But the first thing they want us to do is a sorry so prepare a statement of affairs with the club as at jan 1st 2017 so they want the statement of affairs at the start and just so you can see this is with five marks so this is just going to be about um seven and a half minutes right remember a minute and a half per mark okay so just in case you don't know a statement of affairs is essentially um a very stripped down version of a balance sheet um it's it kind of more takes this the, the the look of a capital calculation per se and because it's a non-profit organization, they don't call it capital. They call it accumulated fund. But it follows the asset minus liability format. Right? Again, if anybody has a different opinion, use a different format, you can let me know in the comments below. All right, so we're going to start up. Rose Hall Golf Club. Statement of Affairs as at 1 Jan 2017. So what do we need? We need assets minus liabilities. So we don't have to necessarily have a particular order for the assets, but I like to use order of permanence. So we're going to start with the equipment. All right, so actually, I forgot to head up. Let's put my dollar signs, assets, and then equipment. All right, so after equipment, we have inventory of competition prizes. I don't think there were any other non-current assets. So inventory is basically stock, right? And then we had, um, after that, subscriptions in arrears. So that's like debtors, accounts receivable. And what they loved to do when they gave us this kind of stuff was they would give us a bunch of information down here, opening and closing balances. But what they would also do is they would give us the opening balance for the receipts and payments account, which is essentially a cash book balance up there. And a lot of people would forget that they had to include that balance in the calculation of a cumulative fund. So you have four assets totaling 32,300. Now, liabilities, we just have a couple. 
right? Subscriptions in advance, 1500 and the amount owing to suppliers of competition price. So basically, as I credit purchases, right? You're owing people money. So let's put in our subs in advance, 1500 and the amount owing to the suppliers of competition prices, totaling 1650 We subtract that from the 32300 and we get the accumulated fund figure of 30650 Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to do a subscriptions account. So they give us a T account format. So you know what I like to do? I like to rearrange my screen so I have a top and bottom split instead of a side by side. So I'm gonna do that now. All right guys, so this is for part B to the question where they ask you to do a subscriptions account. Now again, for the CSEC people um, who may be watching this in the 2021 or whenever, this was removed from the syllabus. So you guys don't actually need to know how to do this. So you could, you could fast forward or if you wanna watch it, cool. So subscriptions is a revenue account. Revenue accounts have the following double entry rules. Credit to increase, debit to decrease. But of course, as you could see from down here, we have opening and closing balances for subscriptions in advance and in arrears. So in advance means prepaid revenue. Prepaid revenue is a liability. So that's going to have a balance brought down on the credit side. Similarly, um, the subscriptions in arrears, that's like accrued revenue, amounts owing to you, which is an asset. That's going to have a balance brought down on the debit side. Right? Now, you could, you could go ahead and plug in the closing balances by going to just below where I have my double lines here. So on the credit side, we're going to put the 800 for the subs in advance at the end of the period. And then on the debit side, you're going to have the brought down um, 1200 for the subs in arrears. And of course, you could kind of like um, put the closing, the corresponding closing figures um, on the opposite side to be carried down. Because right? remember, to be brought down on the debit side, you have to be carried down from the credit side. And to be brought down on the credit side, you have to be carried on from the debit side, right? Now, what else do we have here, right? So, um, in the receipts and payments account, we the only figure related to subscriptions is the member subscriptions received. So, if it's debited there, you have to credit the account from which it came. We're going to credit the subscriptions account for this figure here, right? Twelve thousand. Now, if we were to total up here, we get fourteen seven. That has to be the figure there. What's the balance in figure? Now, normally in for-profit organizations, we would use what? Income statement. Mm, all right. But here, we use the income and expenditure account. So that's what's going to go there. The income and expenditure account, 12,100. All right, so I'm gonna shift back now to do question C. So let me shift around my screen. Okay, and the last part of this question, asks us to prepare a statement showing the profit or loss made on the competition, taking account of the following. Uh, so cost of prize is total 400, and the secretary spent 5% of her time organizing the competition. Now this, as I mentioned earlier in the video, is the part of the question that attracts the most marks, nine marks, right? So um, to actually do this properly, I'm going to have to do a, a split screen on this side as well. So I'm going to do that just so we could see this information as well as the information from the previous page. So let me actually, so let me do that and, and I'll, I'll just edit it in. Cool. So let's take a look and see what we have here. So we want to do a calculation of the profit earned on the competition, right? So uh, let's head up some stuff here. Um, nothing is happening, right? So Rose Hall Golf Club, statement showing profit or loss on competition, dollar sign. So Non-profit organizations, as you, as you guys should know, are also called non-trading organizations. So they don't buy and resell goods to make a profit. So they have to raise money somehow. Now subscriptions and, or membership fees or whatever you want to call it, that brings in a good portion of revenue. But they often need more money than that. So they hold these activities. Sometimes they call it, maybe it's a, like in Trinidad, we call it a FET, or um, we call it a fundraiser, or a dinner party, or whatever the case is. They have these competitions, these fun days. So they have people paying to come to these things. And of course, they have expenses associated with throwing these, these, um, these fundraisers. So the first thing we'll need if we're calculating profit on, on an activity is revenue. So the only thing I'm seeing with respect to revenue um, is the sale of the competition tickets, which is this item right here. All right, sale of competition tickets. So that's the revenue from the competition. I'm not seeing anything else there, nor was I seeing any information down here about opening or closing balances with respect to that. Okay, so we now have to minus the expenses. So let's go simply, right? So we have here the secretary spent 5% of her time organizing the competition. And the secretarial expense on top here is 5,000. So the secretarial expense associated with the competition is 5% of 5,000, which is 250. 
right? The next thing I'm seeing, so a lot of times when you want to talk about expenses associated with something, just look in the Reese's and Famous account, all right? So we have suppliers for competition prices. Now that's like your, your, your payments to creditors. So I'm actually gonna do a T account with that and come back to that figure. Um, stationary, know that refreshments for competition, right? So do we have any creditors for refreshments for competition down here? No, we have the competition prices thing. So again, that'll come into play just now, all right? So we have um, refreshments, right? Now we need the cost of the prizes for the competition. So this is basically gonna be like a cost of goods sold. So we're gonna need the inventory figures, the opening and closing figures, right? So opening stock of prizes and the closing stock of prizes. And of course we need the purchases. So just, I'm just gonna rearrange my screen, go back to the T account format, and then I'm gonna shift back across here. Okay, so this is the T account that will help us to calculate the purchases of competition prizes, the amount that was actually incurred. It's basically um, like a control account for creditors. So we're gonna need our opening and closing balances, right? So we have the 150 for the opening balance. Again, it's a creditor, that means it's a liability. And the closing balance will be carried down from the debit side, so right? 150 and 50. Then we also have the amount paid to the suppliers for competition prize, which is 500. So if it's on the credit side here, it's going to be on the debit side here. And if we were to balance it off, what goes here? That would be the purchases of the competition or prizes used. All right, so let me rearrange my screen and go back to finish off that question. Okay, so we saw how we got the purchases figure um, for the competition prizes. So I'm just gonna put it here, right? So that was $400, so now we're gonna add up. So sorry, it's 300 plus 400 is seven, right? Seven minus two is five. So we have $500 with respect to the um, co the cost of the prices for the competition. We add up this middle column, it's gonna give us 950, and that's gonna give us a final figure of, what's that, 450? Or 350, sorry, hmm. a little off with the maths there, for the profit on the competition. Okay, so ladies and gents, that's about it for this question. Again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer them. If you wanna check out more playlists for more videos, check out these things here. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, please. And also you can check out my website for POA handouts. Again, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.